G'day everyone, right, uh, Mark here, and um, excuse me if my voice sounds a little difficult, um, I'm getting used to having teeth again, so bear with me. Now this is just an update for everyone that may have been following Tony's case. Um, it was set for um, us hearing the judgment on the 16th of February, um, but unfortunately what we did on the 15th of February, the day beforehand, is we filed an application for a dismissal without conviction under the Sentencing Act, uh, Section 106, I think it is. Now, we did that just in case he is found guilty. Um, the grounds for the 106 dismissal um, is quite simply he runs his own company. Um, criminal convictions kind of make it difficult to become a director of a company. So, um, yeah, that's what's happened there. So we sent in an application for dismissal under Section 106 on the 15th, all set to go to Manukau on the 16th at 10 o'clock for the judgment. Straight after Tony filed, because um, obviously I wrote the application for him, gave it to him, he submits everything because he's self-litigating. Um, and if I try seeing the things, they just fucking ignore me, which is absolutely ridiculous because Tony's also signed an authority to act form, which gives me the, the, the right to make represent, representations on his behalf. Um, so, um, we got an email last thing on, on Thursday night saying it's been rescheduled until the 1st of March in two weeks' time no reason for the rescheduling um, however something that's very strange and normally if you're you know alleged to, for some sort of offense um, say if I go and do a burglary in Timaru or something if I'm pleading not guilty then Timaru is the jurisdictional court so I have to appear there the only way to get things transferred to a different jurisdiction is if you plead guilty then they'll move it to wherever you are say I come back up here to Auckland if I plead guilty they'll hear it so um, what's happened with that is like I say rescheduled until the 1st of March um, ironically my 19th wedding anniversary so yay um, so, uh, yeah, 10 o'clock, 1st of March, at Papakura District Court, which has absolutely no jurisdiction whatsoever to hear the matter that was in Manukau District Court, unless some judge has rescheduled it there, perhaps Jane Lovell Smith is at Papakura District Court and she still wants it to be before her and we have to move with her. Either way, it's a massive inconvenience for us, it's an extra half an hour travel for me to go out to Papakura from Manukau, um, which is ridiculous. Um, so we don't know why they've done it. Um, if he's found not guilty, great end of story. If he's found guilty, we've put in that application to conviction. Uh, was it dismissal without conviction? So in that sense, uh, the sentencing act, as far as I'm aware. So that's where we stand now. So on the 16th, I was all set to go to Manukau. Then I hear from John, um, my old mate John Murphy, because he had um, a matter at Auckland District Court. Ironically, at the same time, I had another friend, um, Magic, who was having his case being heard in Waitakere District Court, or Henderson. So there were three different court cases all going on on the same day. I find out that we're not going to Manukau, so I pop over and see John. Um, Auckland district court stuff theirs up um, so he doesn't have to go to his one and my mate Magic that um, was in family court over parenting orders got exactly what he wanted lawyer for child got admonished by the judge and um, Magic's walked away with um, exactly what he wants and the best thing is it's the best option for the children so because that's what matters most so, um, just a couple of things. When I was, you know, leaving the Waimaku area, heading into town first thing in the morning, don't know about you, but when you're in a roundabout and you're going right, the people opposite you 
seeing you're indicating should give way but no we've got a lot of um, roadworks and shit going on out here and um, yeah ironically <laughs> this prick decides to just carry on and you tell me what you think please leave your comment on that one I'll put it in there. Okay, so, and the second one is, um, for many, well, when I started off doing, you know, recordings on my YouTube channel, I used to sit there and, and record at least one speed camera every couple of weeks around the local neighbourhood. Um, the speed cameras are making 86, 87 million dollars per year in Crown Revenue, and if they don't want to, us calling it Crown Revenue, then in the police, um, in the, the police budget each year they shouldn't be calling it crown revenue if they don't want it being called that that money goes straight into the government consolidation fund slash fund for the politicians so that's that one but yeah lrz135 which is another common speed camera that i see floating around was on triangle road i'll show you that one Z135 B camera. Unbelievable. Alright, so guys, that's um that's that. Um hopefully uh that update has helped you guys all out. Um I'm gonna be going in two days time, me and Tony are off down to Waihi because we're challenging our speed ticket down there. Um then on the Friday, with Friday February, I'm going to be going into Auckland District Court with um, Johnny to see if we can get a Section 147 dismissal sorted out. And um, yeah, it's going to be a full on week. Um, and then, like I say, in a couple of weeks' time, off to Papakura. And that should be interesting. I may actually give the courts a call and ask them why it's the transfer has happened, why, why are you changing jurisdictions, Papakura doesn't have jurisdiction over a Manukau allegation. Um, so yeah, we'll see how we get on. Just wanted to let you guys all know, now, oh, there's another thing too, um, to my loyal subscriber that generously donated this, um, or a couple of these shirts, dig in at Marston, it's New Zealand's only oil refinery. Ironically, many, many years ago, and by that I'm meaning back in 99 and 2000, I actually went to Marsden Point Oil Refinery because they had to put a 90 centimetre iHug satellite dish on their roof to give them high speed internet. This was before broadband was around. So, yeah, I've been doing that sort of shit for many, many decades. So, yeah, um, top notch. Thank you very much for the donations. I'm not going to say who it was. He wants to stay um, anonymous. But, um, just like to say my appreciation for that because it's always good to, to get out there and support the um, the local goings on. Um, there was another one there with Horus Media. So if you haven't seen Horus Media, um, that's Brad. It, it, it's quite interesting. Horus Media is run by the guy that um, you may remember a couple of years back. He was going into a bowl store, was exempt from wearing a mask. This is during the COVID shit. And a non-cop decided to get a a, a cop's taser and, and taser him in the back. Um, this was when he was fighting them um, because they were trying to unlawfully arrest and under section 48 of the Crimes Act you have the right to use whatever force necessary to defend yourself against what you believe to be an unlawful arrest. So um, yeah, that's where we stand there. So thank you very much for those donations. Also to anyone else that has um, given some donations lately thanks so much it definitely does help helps with the running costs going backwards and forwards and helping all these people out um, which is the main reason I do this is to help others um, 
I may have some stuff in regards to my friend Magic and the family court coming up next. Um, and as I've said before, I'm going to have to wait until Tony's matter is concluded before any possible videos get released. Um, so we'll see how we go. Just watch an 8 mile here, so it's, it's quite a good movie. Always a fan. Alright guys, um, much love to you all. Um, I must say it feels strange having teeth. I haven't had a full set of teeth in my mouth for 20 years. So um, my thanks to DT Denture Clinic in Whanuapai. They did an excellent job. Um, yeah, well worth it. So I can now get back to eating. Just got to get used to it. Um, so yeah, take care everyone. Sorry if I'm blabbing on. It's, I know you, no one has heard from me in the last few weeks, so I just figured better get that out there. But I have been working hard. There may be up to 20 to 25 new videos coming out shortly that are all uploaded and ready to be published. But we'll see how we go on the 1st of March in regards to that one. Um, I will say to uh, my friend Chris Hurd, Senior Solicitor of Ministry of Justice, um, who likes to presume what I do, or assume what I do, um, it's quite interesting to see that if there was any recording done at court, it's ironic that it's not me doing it. In fact, I may just possibly have some audio recordings of court matters that the prosecutor himself recorded unbeknownst to him, and also the registrar in the courtroom recorded. Um, but that's another story. Either way, it's not me doing it. And don't forget, the court likes to discriminate against people that like to stand up for their rights. And I've been threatened from, for trespass from, from Manukau because I choose to exercise a pre-existing right that I already have. And don't bother asking permission and downgrading that right to a privilege that some authority can grant me. Um, yeah, I've always said that. You, you have the right to record. Section 11... 1A of the Court, uh, Court Security Act um, does go on about phone, uh, phones and cell phones and usage and prohibitions um, but they also have that little caveat that affects that person or applies to that person so I'd love to see how they can apply that um, don't forget under the Bill of Rights you have section 14 which is the right and freedom to seek receive and impart information and opinions of any kind in any form but you also have section 5 Bill of Rights that means anything over from section 11 upwards because 8, 9 and 10 are um, absolute rights they can't be justifiably squashed um, but under section 5 um, any right that is going to be infringed upon they must have demonstrable ju justification for doing so and I always thought of public courthouses where people go and dr drag their troubles into the public forum. As Judge, Judge Andre said to us, uh, Andre Wilton said to us on the 29th of June last year, justice must be seen to be done. Well, how are people going to see it if all you guys like to do is cover up and hide what you're doing in a public fucking courthouse? And the other thing is that you always hear judges going, oh, the court this, the court that. Don't try and hide from your decisions. I sincerely hope that people start um, holding judges accountable. Section 8B and 16 of the Judicial Conduct Commission Act, or the JCC Act, um, are gatekeeping functions. That's why there's been over 4,200 complaints in the last 15 years since the JCC's been around, or sorry, 18 years now, 19 years. Um, it came out in 2005. So it's... Um, it's interesting that there's been 4,200 complaints, and as far as I know, Judge Wilson, only one judge has been removed, and it's because a lot of people are making complaints to the JCC in regards to a procedural matter or um, some rule, whereas it's all about conduct. It's not about what actually happens in the courtroom, it's about how you're being treated by the judge according to the Judicial, judicial Conduct uh, Guidelines. 2007, uh, 2019, so there's always that. Um, enough of me babbling. I'll be going on for 13 minutes. I'm going to shut up now. Um, trust you all have a fantastic time, and believe me, I will keep everyone posted as to what's going on with uh, a few cases that are going on at the moment. Um, 
I would, like I say, say to my friend Chris, don't presume anything and don't accuse me of doing things unless you've got fucking evidence to prove it, all right? And, um, yeah, if, it, it, another funny fact is that if I ever get trespassed from a court, I just got to get a speeding ticket and I'll get invited back. And what happens if you're invited back onto a premises that you're trespassed from, that trespass becomes void, which means I'd have to re-trespass me after every time I show up for a, a hearing in that jurisdiction. So it's a bit of an empty threat, that uh, Chris, but again, I don't give a fuck, quite frankly, mate. Um, I go to court for fun. If you want to kill some of my fun, go for it. Bye all. Take care. Um, I hope February's going well for you. Like I say, it's going to be an interesting year. Take care, guys. Much love to you. Bye now. Mm-hmm.